Today we're doing a lab called Isotopes of Pentium. The lab is going to start out with some basic definitions. Isotope, mass number, and atomic mass average. Be careful, the mass number and the atomic mass average are not the same thing, so you should know the difference at this point. Now for a little introduction. Before 1982, uh, pennies were, and again, this lab is based off pennies, pennies were pretty much all copper. They were 95% uh, copper and 5% tin. After 1982, they changed the way they made them. Now, the reason they did this was actually because the cost of copper went up, and so it ended up costing more than a penny to make a penny. So they needed a cheaper way of making a penny because you don't want it to cost more than the actual coin's value. So what they did was they made the uh, penny out of pretty much zinc, and then they put a very thin copper coating over the outside to make it more durable and to make it stay the same color and look the same, but the inside is a cheaper, more abundant metal. Because of that, the old pennies and the new pennies have different weights, just like isotopes. The isotopes are when you have the same element, but they have different uh, masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. Well, in these, in the penny example, we have two sets of pennies and one is heavier than the other, but they're both pennies, and that should be enough to answer the questions one through three. Now, for the lab, part A. Part A is pretty simple. You're gonna have to figure out the average weight of an old penny, the average weight of a new penny. It's not that hard. So here's what's gonna happen. So the first thing you're gonna do is the new pennies. We are going to, um, we, I have a Petri dish here and I have old and new with a bead. If you're just doing all new or all old, it doesn't matter where they go. So the first thing we're gonna do is zero out the weight of the petri dish and then we're going to take 10 old pennies and i counted that they were 10 and i checked their dates uh, a few minutes ago that they were all in fact old and we're going to weigh them so the mass of the old pennies is going to be 30.9 and now that's for 10 old pennies you then divide by 10 you get the mass of a new penny i mean sorry an old penny and it's going to be 3.09, all right? Then we put them back. Now the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do the same thing, but with 10 new. So it's zeroed out already. I counted already that there were 10. We weigh our 10 new and we get 25.2. Divide that by 10, 2.5. Two. So, and these are grams. Now, the next step is we are going to calculate the mass of 10 old and 7 new. And so the way we're going to do that, and I'm going to let you do it, is you are going to uh, multiply the, you're essentially going to add up the mass of three of these. So this plus this plus this. There's a quicker way of doing it mathematically where it's going to look like this. which is very similar to how you calculate the mass of isotopes. So you're gonna do a mathematical setup like that, and that's gonna give you your calculated, you can plug in the numbers on your own, calculated total mass of 10 pennies. And then that's, um, and then actually, if you do the division, you're actually gonna go straight to, so if you do the formula I set up, it takes you right to there. So you don't even need you don't need that, you can skip that. So if you just take this and then divide by 10, you'll get the average. And then what you're gonna do is we're gonna see if your average that you calculate is gonna be close to the average that I come up with. So we need seven new. So this is why I have the bead down the middle. So there's seven new. And then here's three old. And then let's see, I get 27.0 grams, divide by 10, 2.7 grams or 2.70. And so that's what I would expect because there's more new, so therefore the average is a little bit closer to the mass of a new, which is 2.5. It's a little bit closer to 2.5 than it is to um, basically 3.1, okay? Um, and that's because 3.09 .0, rounded, we'll just call it 3.1. Uh, and so that's what you're gonna do. And then you answer the questions and then we go on to the next step. There is another question for part B over here. 
So this question goes, I'm sorry, for part A, and then for part B, we are going to take our pennies back. Now the trick here is you don't wanna mix these pennies up, which is why I have the little glue bead down the middle, because now we're gonna flip it, and we're gonna do seven old and three new. So again, you do your setup like this, just like it were isotopes, we know the mass of the old and the new, divide it by 10, and you'll actually go straight to the answer that way. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna calculate it, and you could do this the old fashioned way, take the average weight of an old and go that plus that plus that seven times, and then add the new three more times, and then that would be the total, and then divide by 10 for the second number. So you can do it the old fashioned way. My way is modeling it after the isotope, um, uh, the weighted average mass calculations, because um, you know you're gonna have seven times the weight of the old and three times the weight of the new or the average weight of the new and then you'll get your answer that way but we're going to check to see if it matches up so now we're going to do seven old and again we should expect the average uh this average mass to be closer to the weight of the old one so closer to 30 or 3.1 when we divide by 10 then it should be closer to and further away from 2.5. So let's see, so now we get 29.1 divided by 10, 2.91. So that should, that pretty much is what we predicted. You, The mass is closer to the mass of the old than the new, and the reason being is uh, there's more old than new, so the average is gonna be closer there. And that's pretty basic for isotopes, and that's pretty much how it works. Then there's some more questions about it. And that's it for the old and the new. And then we go to the very last part, which is the unknown sample. And so for the unknown, all we're gonna do is weigh the 10 pennies, because this is a mix. And so my average weight is 28.7, well, my total weight is 28.7, my average is 2.87 grams when I divide by 10. And then the question is, is there um, based off the averages, would you expect there to be more old or more new? And just to review, the, the new weight was 2.5. The old weight was 3.1, 3.09, but we're rounding. And so where along this scale does this fall, does 2.8, meaning is it exactly in the middle? I'll try to estimate the middle, or is it closer to this side, or is it closer to that side? Well, if it's closer to 3.1, then that means there should be more old ones here. If it's closer to 2.5, then there should be more new ones. And if it's exactly in the middle, then there should be an even amount of each. Um, and so the next thing you're gonna do is you're actually gonna count them out and check the dates on these. I will attach a picture of these pennies, an up close picture so that you can look through them and zoom in and check the dates and see if you're correct. And then at the bottom, it's uh, the unknown sample number is six. And I'm not gonna tell you, um, you're gonna fill in the number of old and the number of new to see if you were correct once you do the counting. And that's it for this lab.